Hello and welcome to our service of Holy Communion today. My name's Debbie Pau and I'm part of the clergy team at St Mary's Chalcombe and St Stephen's Lansdowne. And it's wonderful to be able to welcome you into my home, into my dining room in fact. Whether you're a regular in our churches or whether you're an occasional visitor, it's wonderful to have this time together. You know, today is a very significant day in the life of our churches. This evening at 5.30 at St Stephen's, we'll be having a said Evensong service. It will be the first service in either of our churches since lockdown began at the end of March. We have thought long and hard about how we uh, do our services at the moment and have decided for the time being at least, we'll continue with our Eucharist service online. This is a communion service and you may like to have bread and wine with you to have at the appropriate time in our service. God is both inside and outside of time and space. And although we are physically apart, spiritually we are together. And we believe God is with us in that. If that doesn't feel right for you, please remember that I'm taking communion on behalf of all in our parishes. This service comes to you today with many people taking part. Various parts of the services has been filmed in a variety of ways and you may notice in some of the recordings there are black background noises. Do uh, allow those to wash over you and be able to focus on what's being said by the, the reader or the intercessor. The liturgy is available on St Stephen's website if you haven't got a copy of it, uh, you may like to pause this recording now and go and get it. We'll take a, a short pause before we start. So friends, we gather in the name of, the fa of God, who's Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to be our advocate in heaven, to bring us to eternal life and to save us from all that leads us away from God's glory. These things that are against God's love, we call our sins. So in a moment of quiet, in penitence and faith, let's bring them to mind now.
And so we confess them, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And we pray together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. So, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As forgiven people, let's say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you, are, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And a prayer for today. Hidden God, who made the face of Moses shine with the gift of your friendship. Teach us the law of love, carried by breath of spirit, and planted in hearts of flesh, that we might be children again, and the world restored to you, through Jesus Christ, the glory of God. Amen. Our first reading is going to be read for us by Bobby Payne from St Mary's Church. The reading is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, beginning at verse 1. For the law contains but a shadow and no true image of the good things which are to come. It provides for the same sacrifices year after year and with these it can never bring the worshippers to perfection for all time. If it could, these sacrifices would surely have ceased to be offered, because the worshippers, cleansed once for all, would no longer have any, sin, any sense of sin. But instead, in these sacrifices, year after year, sins are brought to mind because sins can never be removed by the blood of bulls and goats. That is why, at his coming into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire, but thou hast prepared a body for me. Whole offerings and sin offerings thou didst not delight in. Then I said, Here am I. As it is written of me in the scroll, I have come, O God, to do thy will. First, he says, Sacrifices and offerings whole offerings and sin offerings thou didst not desire nor delight in, although the law prescribes them. And then he says, I have come to do thy will. He thus annuls the former to establish the latter, and it is by the will of God that we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. That is the end of the reading. Thank you, Bobby. Do hope the noise of the builders in the background wasn't too distracting for you. Thought you'd like to see uh, our new curate, Andrew, once again, to get yourself familiar with him. 
So Andrew is going to read our gospel for us now. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning, the word already existed. He was with God and he was God. He was in the beginning with God. He created everything there is. Nothing exists that he didn't make. Life itself was in him and this life gives light to everyone. The light shines through the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. But although the world was made through him, the world didn't recognise him when he came. Even in his own land and among his own people, he was not accepted. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn. This is not a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan. This rebirth comes from God. So the word became human and lived here on earth among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the only Son of the Father. And we have benefited from the rich blessings he brought to us, one gracious blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but his only Son, who is himself God, is near to the Father's heart. He has told us about him. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Andrew. Now you may have gathered that during July and the early part of August, we're having a mini sermon series. Philip and I will be tackling topics that you as members of our congregation have asked us to preach on. Last week Philip looked at the unconditional love of God and I'm glad that he started there because this week Mike Renton has asked us to look at the wrathful God that we see in the Old Testament and how we reconcile that with the, the God of love that we see in the New. In particular how do we interpret some of the really difficult passages as in, say, Deuteronomy, when the death penalty is prescribed for sins ranging from collecting sticks on the Sabbath or being a stubborn son? And where the Israelites are told to slaughter the tribes that they conquer, including women and children. They're passages that make us wince. It's no wonder that so often when you ask people what they think of God, how they view God in the Old Testament, the word wrathful is often used. Now, it's a big and tricky topic and, and in one sermon I can only begin to tickle the surface. But there are a few things that I can offer that can help us when we tackle some of those passages. But begin by holding that image of God's unconditional love in your mind. And realise that it actually is precisely because we think of God in that way and as we know his unconditional love, that these passages are so problematic. How can a God of love allow or at worst encourage such violence against human beings? whom he loves. So do we just read these passages and view God as being different to the God of the New Testament? Or do we ignore them and just focus on the bits we like? Or do we see God as changing over time from the old to the new? In which case, what is God really like? When we're looking at the Bible and we're looking at scripture, we have to remember that the Bible is a collection of books written over thousands of years by many different authors. What holds them together 
is the fact that they tell the story of God's interaction with his people. God doesn't operate in a vacuum. He interacts with people where they are, in their different cultures, in their particular point of time in which they live. And so as we read the books, we have to remember they come as a collaboration between God and the people he uses to write his, his story. And God never steamrollers over us. So everything that we offer as from God, everything like that takes a little bit of us along with it. Hopefully there's a large chunk of God there too. But while we might think that we are uh, independent, that we're countercultural, that we're just speaking for God, our understanding and our interpretation of God always comes into the things in a small way. So understanding the context and the culture of the day is one of the big keys that we have that helps us to unlock some of those difficult passages. I remember early on in theological college was our first lecture on the Old Testament. And the lecturer just projected onto the wall a map of the uh, ancient Near East. And he spoke to us about uh, climate and food supplies and war. And that's the context that the Old Testament is written into. There's fertile Egypt, uh, fairly self-contained to the southwest of Israel. There's Israel occupying the land of milk and honey, a, a reasonably fertile area, but surrounded on the north and the east by uh, very mountainous and arid regions. And the lecture just got us thinking about the ways that when food was scarce, the tribes in those mountains, often quite aggressive peoples, would raid the uh, Israelites' territory. It, the, uh, the land that Israel occupied was often contested. Times were brutal too, and it wasn't unknown for whole villages to be wiped out by marauding armies. What use was their land if they were still there to consume what it offered? Sometimes though, conquerors were more benign. They were happy to make peace treaty, a covenant with those that they'd taken over. And at such times there would be rules imposed on the conquered nation. Often there would be money uh, as part of what would be paid and would be due to the conquering tribe. And in return for keeping those laws and for, keeping, uh, for paying those, those uh, dues, the conquering tribe would protect uh, the conquered tribe. And actually we see that sort of pattern uh, in the way that God works with his people in the Old Testament. It was a way that the Israelites could understand God's protection of them. They keep his, his laws and he protects them. So it's into that brutal culture that the Old Testament is written. And we have to remember that culturally at that time too, there was a common belief that fortunes were controlled by the gods. If a dis disaster befell you, it was because you'd angered the gods. And so you made sacrifices to the gods. And there is evidence that although the Israelites were God's chosen people, that actually they'd taken with them out of Egypt uh, an array of gods that they still worshipped. And they added the God of Abraham to the, 
the pantheon of gods that they already worshipped. So the idea that God is angry fits very much with the, the culture of the day and their understanding of the way that life worked. Within that culture of the time, there was also very much a class or tribe mentality. If one person did wrong, the whole group was punished. I wonder if you ever experienced that at school. I do remember being in detentions for the wrongdoing of one member of the class, the whole class suffering. So in the biblical times, the Old Testament, if if someone injured someone else, it would be quite normal for the injured, uh, for the family of the injured party to in, inflict great retribution on the whole family of the offender. And so when we look at the laws of the Old Testament, they seem very violent to us, but they seek to limit that retribution. They bring in some sort of proportion for uh, in the punishment. We see that the phrase eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But in fact, Jewish culture went further than that. Uh, God's laws anyway. If somebody accidentally killed someone else, the person who had, uh, had the, caused the accident could flee to one of three cities that were cities of refuge, and they could live there in safety uh, and protection. So woven into the violence of the culture of the day, we begin to see and understand some of God's um, rescuing, some of his compassion. We begin to see the com glimpses of the compassionate God that we're so much more familiar with in Jesus. And sometimes we see that really quite overtly in some of the big stories, the rescue of God's people from slavery in Egypt through the Exodus. And we see too in people like Abraham and Moses and David, people who seem to have a knowledge of, of God, a relationship with God. We see very much that they understood him uh, as a live, loving and compassionate God. But so often those threads are a little bit hidden amongst the culture and the practices of the day. I don't know if you've ever walked through the countryside and heard a skylark singing. They, say, they have such a beautiful song and yet they sing from so high up. that As you scan through the skies, you can barely see this little speck that is creating such a beautiful song. And reading the Old Testament can be a little bit like that searching for the skylark. We have to search out God's true character, but it is there, hidden and woven through the Old Testament. And amongst that too are the pointers and the, uh, for the, to the Messiah, to Jesus. They're prophecies and there are fleeting glimpses, odd characters. Um, Melchizedek being one who just uh, appears and disappears and is later likened to, uh, to Jesus. John sees Jesus as being present throughout all of history. He doesn't just appear at his birth at the start of the New Testament. He's clear too, John, is that we see the, the invisible God through the visible Jesus. And it's through Jesus that we see God's character. And of course, we need to remember that Jesus and his disciples were all Jews. They were all very familiar with the Old Testament scriptures and Jesus quite often quotes them. He gives them great weight and power. And so in our attempts to understand the Old Testament writings, 
we do need to hold that reverence too. The writer of the letter of the Hebrews was grappling with similar issues when he was writing to Jewish converts who were struggling to maintain their faith uh, at a time of persecution. In the passage that Bobby read to us, the writer is trying to explain his understanding of the old covenant uh, of law and how it's the shadow of things to come. Throughout his letter, he grapples with the inadequacies of the old covenant, showing Christ's superiority and his fulfilment of all those laws. We may see God as being wrathful in the Old Testament, but you know, there's still so much that is so wonderful and so good there too. There are those wonderful stories. I always love the story of Joseph. But there's great reverence for God too, for his utter, utter holiness, his purity, his awesome might, his sovereignty. And I don't think we get those in quite the same way in the New Testament. And it's good to hold that tension with those qualities of God, with the gentle fatherliness that we see so much more clearly, and with the suffering of Jesus. Together, the old and the new give us much greater richness and understanding of God. So as you have a look at the Old Testament. I do hope that you will find some way forward from those difficult passages. Amen. As we reflect on the nature of God. Let's declare our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again in, and descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Judy Palmer, one of our church wardens at St Stephen's, will lead us in our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Almighty God, bless our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth and all who are in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour of your name, and the good of your church and people. We ask for God's blessing on our own church, that community will be strengthened despite the inability to gather together, and for wisdom for Philip and Debbie, as they lead us in these difficult times when churches are only just beginning to open. Grant them the perseverance and resourcefulness they need to carry us forward. In all our busy lives, let us pause a while so we can hear your still, small voice and receive your words and guidance. We pray that our government, 
and those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies may make wise decisions, not through force and domination, but by cooperation and mutual respect. Gracious Lord, we thank you for all doctors, nurses and medical researchers, that through their skill and insight, many will be restored to health. Thank you too for all paramedics, ambulance drivers, porters, care workers and cleaners, who have such an important role to play. Lord, we are so very grateful for our police officers and armed forces who are keeping us safe as we go about our daily business. Bless our homes and families and all our neighbours and friends. Train us to listen to one another with full attention and recognise one another's gifts. With the start of the summer holidays, we pray for all children, parents and carers. We pray for our schools, St Stephen's, Abbot Alfage, Kingswood, the Royal High and St Mark's. For all the teachers, pupils and governors. We pray for our local community and for all the people going about their daily life and work. We pray for the elderly and those who are alone and have no one to share their fears. Merciful God, we entrust to your tender care those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort and heal them, we pray, and restore them to health and strength. In our community, we ask especially for your healing hand on Muriel, Jean, Amelia, Sally, Bill, Mike, Hilary, Jenny, Rebecca, Oscar, and Ellie and Isabel. Welcome into your eternity, Lord, all those who have died in faith, remembering our friends Richard, Sue, and Kim, and all their families who are grieving at this time. May we in our turn share with them the joy of living with you forever. Thank you, Lord our God, for the hope you have given us through Christ, which enables us to enjoy living in eternity, even while we still journey here. Go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Peace to you from God our Creator. Peace to you from Jesus Christ who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit the life giver, the peace of the triune God be always with you. Our first hymn this morning has been chosen for us by David Hyton from St Stephen's Church. It's not a hymn that most will be familiar with, though you will know the tune. And if you don't find the hymn easy to sing along with, Enjoy the singing and the words. The words were written by the German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, who insisted on following a way of love during the Second World War and found himself imprisoned in a um, concentration camp as a result. 
He wrote this hymn in that camp shortly before his death. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life and make us branches of the true vine. Blessed be God forever. Friends, the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Ever loving God, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us, announcing your kingdom is near. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. 
so he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the, for the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we and the whole company of saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. So being made one in communion with God, let us pray with confidence as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died and now lives for you, 
and feed in, on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ broken for you. blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. An ancient blessing from the Old Testament way back uh, in the book of Numbers. May the Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and those you love, now and always. Amen. Our final hymn today has been chosen for us by Sheila Page from St Mary's. It's a great old favourite of mine too. Father, hear the prayer we offer.
before our time together ends. Uh, just a few notices. A reminder that this evening uh, is our first service back in one of our churches, 5.30 at St Stephen's Church for our said Evensong service. And our churches are open for private prayer. Uh, St Stephen's is open on Wednesdays and Saturdays from 9 to 6 unsupervised, so do follow the notices. They are there for your safety and the safety of others. And St Mary's, uh, being smaller, is only open for uh, two one-hour sessions on Monday and Fridays from 5 to 6 p.m. Philip will be there supervising and others. Um, if you're able to help us with the supervision of those sessions, do get in touch. Many of you have been praying for uh, Ellie and her baby Isabel over the last week or two. And it's wonderful to be able to say that they were well enough to be able to go home this week. They've really valued your prayers and do continue to pray for them as they get stronger. During this time of lockdown, uh, our churches have struggled in, in, in several ways. And amongst that, uh, financially, many of our expenses, particularly our parish share, which goes to pay to, to the diocese to pay Phillips and other clergy's wages, um, still have to be paid. And we are so grateful for those who uh, do give by standing order. If you are someone who has given by through the envelope scheme and you could consider giving uh, by standing order or by a cheque or any other means, uh, it'd be wonderful to hear from you. Do get in touch with Philip or myself and we'll be able to pass you on to the relevant treasurer to your church. Our churches only are able, able to operate because of your generous giving. So we are so thankful for all that you do give. Over the years, many of you will have heard me in my sermons mentioning new wine. It's uh, a big Christian gathering that I love to go to each year and just uh, receive my top up of the Holy Spirit particularly. And so um, this year, new wine isn't able to operate in its usual way. But it is going to be available online and free. So if it's something that you've always you've thought mm, that sounds interesting, I'd like to find out a little bit more or experience something. Obviously, it won't be the same as uh, the usual gathering, but the teaching and the worship, which is contemporary in style, will be uh, all there available. It's um, going to be running from the evening of Thursday the 30th of July until Monday the 3rd of August and uh, you dip in and out. I will send there will be details uh, coming through an email or if you'd like to know a little bit more specifically do get in touch with me. Uh, there is a children's, uh, a kids summer holiday club on a virtual one online being run by all the churches together in Bath. Do pray for that. It's going to ca uh, carry on for six weeks over the summer holidays. Finally, I'd love to thank all those who contributed so much to the services today, uh, to our readers and intercessor, to our hymn choosers, um, and particularly to Andrew for the way that he stitches everything together so beautifully. And to Linda Fursland, who keeps St Stephen's website so up to date. Um, really grateful thanks to you. And, and a grateful thanks to, I know Philip's mentioned it before, but to Philip and my families who put up with our homes being turned into recording studios. And in the case of my family, notices all around saying, quiet please recording uh, as people tiptoe round. so do many thanks to them morning prayer continues each morning at 8 a.m on facebook and it's available a bit later than that on youtube philip will be here for our eucharist next sunday 
So wish you a good week and go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.